Hey everyone, welcome to another Polygon Runway tutorial and today I want to introduce you to a friend and a fellow community member, Veritza. She likes to go by name of V and spends her days working with Blender like all of us and currently lives in Texas, so it's only appropriate that she will share a tutorial on how to make this cute little cowboy hat. And if you want to appreciate her effort and support her, please check out the links to our courses down below. If you get one, you will support her as well. And I really hope you will enjoy this one. If you do, please leave a like and definitely please leave us comments if you enjoy this type of tutorial and content, if you like V and her style of teaching and if you want to see more. So now, without further ado, let's enjoy the tutorial. Hi guys, I'm V and today I'm going to show you how I made this cowboy hat inside Blender 3D and we're going to go through the entire process of modeling, modifiers, adding materials and lights to our scene. So by the end of this video, you should be able to reproduce this exact scene yourselves. So let's just start right away. Before we start with our modeling process, I just want to do one thing first to go here into the edit menu and go into the preferences. And we want to activate only the two add-ons. Both of them are free. You do not have to download anything. You just need to install them right here. We're going to search for the first one, that's the Add Mesh Extra Objects. Just make sure that it's checked here on the side. And the other add-on we need is the Node Wrangler. Also, just make sure that it's sticked here on the side so that we can use it. And now we are ready to start modeling our cowboy hat. So first, we're going to clear out our scene. I'm going to press A to select all and delete or X to remove everything from the scene. And now we are ready to go into our top view. I'm going to press 7 on the numpad and Shift A to add a new object. And I'm going to add a circle here. And here in the circle menu, we're just going to lower the number of vertices from 32 to something about 10. We can zoom in so that we can see better. We will tab into the edit mode and while everything here is selected, I'm going to press E to extrude and S to scale and create just a little outer rim right here. And then again, E to extrude and S to scale and create another radius somewhere about here. Now with that selected, I'm going to press E to extrude and Z to lock it on the Z axis and pull this bit a little bit higher like this and then S to scale it inwards a little bit. And again, E to extrude, S to scale and create another radius right here. E to extrude, Z to lock it on the Z axis and pull it inside like this and S to scale this one too. Now when we look from the top view by pressing 7 again, we can see the size of our radius. We can maybe make it even a little bit smaller. And with that circle selected, I, we can go into the face menu and just select the grid fill. And here we will just manipulate the offset until we get this edge through the middle here so that we have our head evenly separated to the left and the right side. Now that we have done that, we can switch to the edge select. You can click here or you can just press 2 on your keyboard and we can click away to deselect everything. Now we can select this edge right here on the left and the opposing edge on the right as well while holding shift. And I'm going to press O to activate the proportional editing right here. We can go to the front by pressing 1 on an numpad and press G to move and Z to move these edges on the Z axis. Something like this. And we can also press S to scale and scale it on the x-axis to bring these a little bit closer together. So now our object should look something like this. We can tap out to the object mode and then going to press control and number two on the keypad to add the subdivision modifier. It's going to show up right here. We can also select on cache so that we can see it in the edit mode as well. And I'm going to right click and shade smooth. So from here, we can just tap into the edit mode again and while holding alt i'm just going to select this edge right here and i'm going to add a little bevel to it by pressing ctrl and b at the same time i'm just going to drag this out a little and just move the mouse wheel 
only once so that we get only one edge loop through the middle here. Now we can click away to deselect that. I'm going to go back into the top view by pressing 7. And now we can switch to the vertex select by pressing 1. And we're going to select these six vertices right here. And we can scale them on the X by pressing S and then X to bring them closer together like this. And we're going to do the same with these opposing vertices right here. We're going to press S and X to move them a little bit further apart. Now we can just select this row right here and press S and X again and just move them a little bit closer so now they are forming this nice little smooth triangle right there at the top of our hat. Now that we have done that, I want to go back into the edge select by pressing 2 while holding ALT, just click this edge right here and we're going to slide it down a bit by pressing G and G again and just moving it with the mouse a little bit lower until it's somewhere like this. And now in vertex select, when we look from the front, I want to select this vertex right here. It's the second one from the middle and the same one on the opposing side. And while having them selected, we're going to press S and X to bring them closer together as well. So this will now give us this little pinch at the sides of our head. From here, we can just manipulate our dimensions a little bit more. I can look at it from the top by pressing 7. We can select all and, for an example, S and X to make the whole hat a little bit narrower. And maybe select this vertex right here and the one in the front. And with the proportional editing activated by pressing O, we can move these two a little bit further apart, S and Y to move them on the Y axis and maybe also G and Z to move them a little bit downwards. Not too much, just so that we have it like that. And we can select also edges in the edge select and maybe just bring these two also a little bit closer together with the scale and X until we get something like this. Now when we are happy with the, the shape of our head, we can go back into the object mode. We can look at it from the other sides just to see if everything is to our liking. And I'm just going to add a solidify modifier right here. And I'm going to move that mod modifier to the top so that subdivision here is coming after it. And we're going to make this 0.4 for an example and since I wanted the thickness to go downwards not upwards we're just going to change the offset from minus 1 to 1. From here now we can proceed to make our rope around the head and to do that first I'm just going to rename this circle and call it head so that we have our scene nice and organized. We're going to tab into the edit mode and in the edge select but while holding alt I'm just going to select this whole loop right here and shift D to duplicate it and P to separate it from the main head object. Now we can tap back into the object mode. We can select this new object and call it rope. And since we don't need this solidify modifier for that, we can just remove it with an X right there. And we can scale this up a little bit so that we can see it better and G and Z to move it just a little bit further up like this. Now we can go into the edit mode, uh, switch to the vertex select by pressing 1, select all by pressing A and shift and B and press Z right away to move this duplicate a little bit higher than the first one and we're going to press S to scale it down just a little bit. Now that we have done that, I just want to select this vertex in the front right here. I'm going to press B to separate it and now we can just leave it like this. And we're going to do the same with this vertex down here. Just press V to split the vertex and move it right here. With this one selected, we can hold Shift and select this one and press M and merge them at the center. So now we're getting a little spiral that goes around the head and comes back to the front. We can now go press 7 and go to the top view and we can select this vertex right here and we can just extrude it 
a little bit to get to the end of the rope right here. So just press E and just move it a little bit like this and E again and again and one more time like this. You can just do a freehand shape right there, it doesn't matter. Then we're going to do the same with the one here on the top. Go into the top view and press E to extrude and move it to the other side. E to extrude again, again, and E to extrude just one more time and leave it like this. Now we can select these vertices right here and go to the front view by pressing 1 and just G and Z and move these guys a little bit lower so they are closer down to the head. Maybe move this one a little lower too, G and Z. And we can do the same on this other side as well. Go to the front view by pressing 1 and just G and Z so it's not floating high above the head right there. And this one too, G and Z. Now that we have done all of this, I'm going to select this end vertex right here and I'm going to press Shift and S and snap cursor to select it so now that it stands right there. Now when we tab into the object mode, I'm going to select object and set origin and set origin to 3D cursor so that now our rope begins in this spot right here, which is important because now we are going to convert this rope into a curve and when we do that its origin is going to stay right here. So we're going to object and convert and convert this to curve. And we're also going to give a little profile to this curve so that it looks more like a rope. But for now I want to tab into the edit mode and if we look at our curve right now it looks very very dense and we don't need this, this many segments on it. So first thing I want to do is go here into the curve menu in the edit mode and select spline type and I'm going to select, select Bezier and also I'm going to go again to the curve and clean up and decimate the curve. The ratio is 1 right now and we're just going to lower this quite a bit until we get something like this. This is completely enough to keep it going around and still look smooth. So now that we have done that, we can tap back into the object mode. So now we can start creating our profile for this curve. So I'm going to go to Shift A and add a new object and I'm going to select a circle. Circle now has 10 vertices from when we created the head and we just want to lower that down to 6. That's completely enough. And press S to scale it down and make it small like this and as I mentioned earlier now that we have uh, our cursor and our curve origin now our new circle also has the origin in the same spot and this is very important for creating curve profiles uh, the only other thing I want to do I want to rename this into the row also and I want to press ctrl and a and apply scale to this circle now with the circle selected, I'm going to add a screw modifier. I'm going to leave this angle at 360 and going to set the value of the screw to something like 0.2. And I'm going to change the axis to X. Now we see how it, uh, it moved here to the side. We could maybe even make it smaller, like 0.15. And we can still press S and scale our circle down so that the radius of the rope is a little bit smaller as well. And now that we have done that, we're going to also add a curve modifier and this modifier is going to tell our profile which direction to go. So I'm going to select this eyedropper tool and I'm going to select the rope curve. And now we can see how our profile is already going that way. All we need to do is set some iterations here to get it to go all around. We can set the number, let's say 50, and I still want to make it just a tiny bit smaller, maybe like this, maybe set the screw to 0 0.2, and we're going to continue with our iterations. Let's go 60, 
something like this until it's all the way here to the end. And if you see that you're getting some overlapping of the curve here, we can fix that by selecting the curve here in the outliner. And we're going to go tab into the edit mode and we can just uh, move these segments a little bit so that they are away from each other. Let's say this one, G and Y. We can just move it or use this handle, G and Y, just to move it away a little bit so that it looks a little bit nicer. We could also lower it down, G and Z, to give it a little angle right there. But still, we want to make sure that these aren't going through each other, at least not so visibly much. This looks good for now. So we can tap back into the object mode and now we have our rope all around the head, just how we wanted it. So now I just want to add a little bit more detail to our rope. I want to give it like two spheres or beads that are going to be at the ends of this rope. So I'm just going to go Shift and A and in the mesh menu, I'm going to select the UV sphere. And here I'm going to lower the segments to something like 12 and the rings to something like six. And we can tab into the edit mode. I'm going to select this vertex right here. Make sure that you have the vertex select right here and select the bottom one as well. And I'm just going to delete those two by pressing X or delete and just delete those two vertices. And in the object mode, I can scale this sphere a little bit down to something, let's say like this maybe G and Z so that we can see it better. Control 2 to add the subdivision modifier and shade smooth. And also I want to give it a little bit of a solidify. I'm also going to move this solidify to the top so that it is smoother and subdivision comes after it. And I'm just going to increase the thickness until I get something like this. Now we're going to rotate this sphere on the X axis by pressing R and X and type in 90 for 90 degrees. Maybe still make it a little bit smaller. Looking from the top, I can just now move this to something like this so that we still have the end of the rope coming out of it. And maybe R and Z. Just follow that direction a little better. And I'm going to press Alt D to create the linked duplicate. And I'm just going to move it to the other side and R and Z. And I'm going to rotate that one as well. Now, two things here. I want to make sure that these beads aren't going through or floating high above the head. So I can just move this one a little bit lower with the G and Z. And set it to something like this. And the same one here, G and Z. And now, as we can see, this um, rope isn't quite going through the beads and we're going to fix that again. I'm going to go here in the outliner and select the rope, the curve. And while holding shift, I'm going to select only these two beads and press slash on the numpad to isolate only these three objects so that we can see them better. And with the curve selected now, we can tab into the edit mode and we can fix this angle right here. We're going to grab this handle and G and Z and move it just a little bit higher up like this. And we're going to do the same with this one. Select that vertex and select the handle G and Z and just give it a little bit of an angle right there. We can also fix this one as the angle is a little bit uh, sharp right there to something like this. Now we can press slash again to return to our scene. And now it looks a lot better and much more how we want it to look. So we can tap out of the edit mode and back into the object mode. And there's only one more object that I want to add to this scene. And it's going to be a star at the front of this head. So we're going into the fr front view by pressing one on the numpad. And I'm going to hold shift and right click here in the middle of the head. So at the beginning, uh, if you remember, we activated the extra objects uh, add-on, which I wanted to do because now when I 
click Shift and A to add a new object, I'm going to get these extras right here. And I can just select this simple star right here, which is going to add the star object automatically into our scene. And I'm going to uh, get these points from five to six. And I'm going to rotate it on the X axis, R and X and type in 90. So now it's facing forward. Now we can press slash on the numpad to isolate only the star and tab into the edit mode like this. Go to the side view by pressing three on the numpad and press Z to toggle the X-ray. Now that we have done this, we can select this entire back of the star and press delete or X to delete all of these vertices. So now we just have this little flat plane to the front and I'm going to select all and G and Y to move it here where the cursor is. Now we can go to the front view again and I'm going to shift and A and add a circle. Circle can stay at the six vertices right here. We're going to rotate this as well, R and X and 90. And we're going to make it smaller like this. Maybe more like this. And since uh, this circle has no faces in it, we can go to face and grid fill just to give it some geometry. And we can move it upwards to here, G and Z. Move it there and shift and D and Z to move another copy right here and shift and D. And we can just drag another one here. We want to have it at all six points of the star and Shift and D and Z to move this here. Now we can select both of these, Control L to select all linked and Shift and D and X to move it to the other side right here. So now we have something that looks like this, just to make sure that all of these are aligned on the Y axis, we can go and press S to scale and Y and then press zero so that we have them all aligned like that. Now we can tap out of the our isolated view and back into the object mode. We can also untoggle X-ray for now and scale this down a little bit. G and Y, so we can see it right here. And with the star selected, I want to give it a little bit of a solidify modifier. We can also apply scale with Control A and scale. And here we do something like this, 0 0.02 is enough. And another modifier, I want to give it a little bit of a bevel and just increase the segments here from one to two. And I'm going to right click and shade this smooth. Now we can go into the side view by pressing three, Z, to toggle the X-ray mode. And also we can activate the wireframe with the Z menu as well. And just press R to rotate it. And we want to move our star to this edge right here. Something like this. Let's see it in the solid or wireframe move view without the without the x-ray we can go into the edit mode and select this vertex in the middle and just move that out a little bit with the g and y just to maybe give it a little bit of an angle let's go back into the solid view turn off the x-ray we can just move this star a little bit closer to the head so that it actually looks like it is attached to it. And with all of that done, we can only add some more subdivision with Control and 2. And now it looks a lot smoother like this and has all of uh, the shapes that we added to it. Now, when we've done this, we're ready to start adding some materials to our cowboy hat as well.
But before we start adding materials, I first want to add some lights and settings to the scene so that we can have a clear preview of what we are doing in the shading tab. So I'm just going to first shift S and snap cursor to world origin so it's in the middle and shift A and add a light. I'm going to select the area light right here and G and Z to move it above the head, something like this, maybe a little higher. Here in the light settings tab, I'm going to change the square into the disk. And now we can select our preview right here. And it's now showing us the EV preview and we want to render this scene in cycles. So I'm going to switch to cycles and select GPU compute for the device. And now we can add some strength to this light, let's say 50 for now should be enough. From the side view by pressing 3, we can, with the light selected, shift D and copy this light, move it further right, right here and rotate it so it's giving a little bit more light from the front. And now we have a preview of how our hat will work. Also make sure to press Ctrl and S to save your scene so that you don't lose your progress. Now that we've done all of this, I want to stay in the same workspace. So I'm just going to uh, click here and drag this to the side so we can open another window here. We can zoom in a little bit on our head. And this window here, I want to change into the shader editor. We can press N to hide this side menu as we don't really need that right now. And we can now select the head and add our first material. For the head material, I want to make something similar to like leather. So I'm just going to press here and create a new material and I'm going to call this head. You can also preview this if you were to go here into the sidebar and also see all of these settings, but I want to use settings that are a little bit more complicated than this. So I'm just going to use this window right here and for the base color, I want to get something towards the orange or light brown. Maybe a little bit darker like this. And I'm going to add a little bit of a roughness to it. Let's say 07 for now. And now that we have done this, I'm going to take this node move it a little bit right here and click here and shift A. I'm going to search for the mix shader node and I'm just going to drop that right here. I'm going to click here, shift A and we're going to search for the diffuse BSDF. We're going to leave this here and just going to drag and connect it here. And now you see how the second one connected to the old one we had. And I'm going to make this entirely black for now. Now we can use this node and click right here on an empty space, shift A, and I want to add the ambient occlusion. This is one of my favorite ways for stylized shading as it gives it a little bit of a depth and just an overall nicer look in any lightning settings. And now that we have ambient occlusion connected here to the fact, I'm just going to shift A once more and add a color ramp to this and just drop it right here. So that it sits between the ambient occlusion and this mixed shader node. And now we can do something like this as we drag our color ramp values. We can see how the shading is changing, giving it a little bit more shadow right here. We can also manipulate the softness of, of that shadow. and also maybe not make it just as dark, maybe a little bit lighter. And I'm going to do the similar thing for the rope. So we're going to select the rope, create a new material again, call this material rope. I'm going to go to the principled BSDF and change the base color to something like yellowish, beige maybe. And I'm going to create a mixed shader again. So shift A, 
type in mix shader, drop that right here, shift A, and diffuse BSDF, connect that to the first shade right here, and shift A, ambient occlusion, connect that to the fact value, and shift A, and color ramp. Now we can make this diffuse one a little bit darker, but I don't want to do the same thing I did with our hat material. I want to make this color a little bit warmer so that it's not all black. And we can manipulate our shadow so that it's a little bit more visible and gives it a little bit more dimension. When we're happy with that, we can just click away and we can select our star right here. I'm going to call this new material gold. And here we're just going to change the base color to something yellow. And we're going to use this metallic value and put it all the way up. And we can add that same material to these spheres since they are the linked duplicate. If we add one material to one, the other one is going to turn gold as well. Now to, to finalize our scene, we're going to also need a camera and some backdrop. I'm going to start with the backdrop. It's just going to be a plane. So shift A, add a plane to the scene. We can G and Z to move it so it's under the head and not going through it. And I'm going to shift A and add a camera to the scene as well. And now we can pull up this side menu by pressing N. And here we can go into the view. We can also press Ctrl Alt and zero so that we see where our camera is. Now it's from the current view. And here we can select camera to view so now as we rotate the scene, our camera is locked to this view and rotates with it. And we can set some new dimensions here. Let's use 1500 for the X and let's say 1200 for the Y. And we can zoom in and out as we would in the scene while camera follows. We're going to select our backdrop. Let's call that backdrop and rotate it a little bit so r and z and we can make this larger like this we can tap into the edit mode go into the edge select or press 2 on your keyboard select this edge right here e to extrude and z to extrude it on the z-axis select that edge again Control and b to add a little bevel to it and just use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down to get something like this. Now we can tap back into the object mode, right click on the backdrop and shade smooth. Let's readjust an angle so it's maybe a little bit more interesting. And when we're happy with the angle, we can just deselect camera to view and press N to hide this side menu. And now we can move again through our scene. We're going to go to our backdrop, back into our shader editor, and add a new material, and we can just call this backdrop. And give it some nice color. Let's do a green one for this. We can still adjust the colors in these shaders if it's not completely to our liking, just to make it however we want, really. Maybe this will make our uh, ambient occlusion shading stand out a little bit more. We can always just adjust saturation here. Something like this would work. And now from here, we can just add some more lights to make this scene a little bit more interesting. First, we're going to check our world settings. We can maybe lower that uh, just a tiny little bit. Let's check our area lights again. And from the camera view, we can add a little bit of point lights just to give it some rim lightning, something that will make it a tiny bit more interesting. G and Z 
to move this out a little bit and just G and maybe put it somewhere here. We can give this maybe some orange color, add the power to be a little bit stronger like this and maybe a little bit of a radius so that it is softer. Maybe move it away a little bit and shift and D and we can add one to the other side as well. Somewhere like this. And we can make this a different color. Let's say something like blue. So it's giving this nice little shine right there. Maybe go into our backdrop, make that a little darker. And this light right here currently is shining below the head. I don't really like that. So we're just going to move it a little bit like this to get some different angle right there. We can maybe, let's see. Yeah, we could make this top light a little less in power. Let's say maybe 20. And the one that shines from the front, maybe as well. This is a little bit too dramatic. Maybe something like 15. And we can also go here into our render settings and we can go down here to the color management and we can play with these looks here. We can select medium high contrast or maybe medium contrast and give it a little bit of an exposure, maybe like 0.7. And gamma as well. Maybe lower gamma but more exposure to give it a little bit more contrast. And in here we can also activate the denoiser which will make it all render a little bit faster. And this is just tweaking the settings just until we get something that we like. And when you are happy with it, of course, save your scene, control and S or from the file menu, you can save it here. And I think I quite like this. Maybe let's see. We can find more angles. Let's leave it like this. And now we can let's check our uh, samples. I like to go to 5000. It's not much of a difference from the default, but still. Now we can click render and render our image. So another thing that I'm seeing here, our rope is a little rough. So I'm just going to select the rope and control two to give it a little bit of subdivision. Here we can zoom in so we can see better how that looks. And we can still also add it all these settings right here. Now it's going a little bit slower because I'm doing it in a render preview. Depending on your GPU and your machine, you may not want to do this as detailed. So this kind of looks more how I would want it to look. Let's make this shadow a little bit lighter from the ambient occlusion, something like this. And we can make this rougher, like set the roughness all the way up to one. Let's see it. Press zero on your keyboard to go to the camera view. And this is pretty much our scene. So now we can render it again. 
just press render and render image or select F12. And this is our little cowboy hat. So I hope you like this tutorial that maybe you learned something, maybe you picked up a trick or two. If you did, you can leave a comment and you can leave a like. I would love to hear what you think. You can also find me on my social media under 3D Lint and also make sure to check out all the Polygon Runway courses. That's where I learned everything I know about Blender and join us at the Discord community. I'm also active there. So maybe see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.